Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O God, that we may follow the example of your faithful servant Barnabas, who, seeking not his own renown, but the well-being of your church, gave generously of his life and substance for the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk within it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the end of the earth. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the coastlands and their inhabitants, let the desert and its towns lift up their voice. The villages that Kedar inhabits, let the inhabitants of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the tops of the mountain, let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the Mass this morning is Psalm 112. We will pray together the entirety of Psalm 112, which can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 755. Psalm 112. Hallelujah! Happy are they who fear the Lord, and have great delight in His commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending, and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. 
the wicked shall see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. The desires of the wicked will perish. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics, or sandals, or staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and there, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, Shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today in the church we have a confluence of commemorations that I think are appropriate for the season. Today, of course, we honor St. Barnabas, who is a magnificent person within the Bible, and there's perhaps more lore around his life than actual factual information, but what we do know from the Acts of the Apostles and from the letters of St. Paul is that Barnabas was a relentless servant of God. And we know that Barnabas made some sacrifices as well, because the text tells us that he sold a piece of land and gave all of the proceeds to the apostles, gave all of the proceeds to the fledgling church that was just beginning to plant missions around the wider Mediterranean. And of course, the Acts of the Apostles itself calls upon servants of God to, in fact, participate in this communal lifestyle and it sounds incredibly strange and foreign to us who are so used to this individualism and this, uh, this necessity that we gather resources and keep them for ourselves and maybe share with only a few of the people that we like or that we're related to. But the gospel is pretty deliberate, and I, Jesus is also rather deliberate in the way that he teaches us to be present and accountable and generous with one another. And you know, it's interesting, I think sometimes we read texts like the Acts of the Apostles that tell us to give everything to the community, or when Jesus says, sell all you have and give to the poor, and we say, ah, they don't really know what it's like today, you know, things are different today. But this was radical back then, too. In fact, in some ways, radical in ways we can't even imagine. Because systems of familial connection and systems of payment and tribute and all of these things weren't set up in a way where women, the poor, children, widows, the disabled, the mentally Ill. I mean, so many different sorts of people were really considered to be left by the wayside at this point. I mean, really, truly no sense of value for a substantive portion of the population that I, that I think, mercifully, today we have a different understanding of, at least very different than they did in the first century. But Barnabas took those words to heart and did exactly as his Lord and Savior instructed him. He listened to the call of God and he said, Yes, with generosity and trust. He's famous, of course, for traveling with Paul and, in fact, being the bridge between Paul and the church in Antioch because there were many who were still skeptical about St. Paul because he had persecuted the Christians, of course, including sending them to their deaths. And he'd experienced this vision of Jesus and suddenly found himself converted. But I can understand where those first churches were coming from when they looked at him with quite a bit of skepticism, thinking, who is this guy? What right does he have to come into our house and tell us anything at all? Because the memories of those 
murdered him. It was still fresh. In fact, these people knew individuals who had died. And here is the man responsible for it, Paul, and he's coming in to preach suddenly the same message of salvation and resurrection in Christ. And what are they to think about this? It's said by some biblical commentators that Barnabas and Paul, Saul, he has both names in the scriptures, but some commentators have reflected that they probably knew one another from their time as rabbinical students. Because Barnabas was a Jew, he was a Levite from Cyprus. And it was possible that the two of them had studied under Gamaliel, the famous rabbi who was Paul's teacher. Gamaliel was a famous teacher of, in particular, Levites, and circumstantial evidence suggests that Barnabas could have been among the students, and he might have known Paul. He might have known this passionate, deliberate, sort of strange person who suddenly comes onto the Christian scene and is preaching this message of salvation. And Barnabas was the one who said, hey, guys, I know him. Give him a chance. We need that sometimes. We need that, I think, to break through the walls that we place around our hearts in terms of who we deem acceptable to be in relationship with. I certainly know I've had this experience myself. I mean, you think there's only so much you can give, and yet sometimes God wants something unexpected of us. He wants us to be in community with people that we not, don't necessarily understand to be people who belong to our community. And so sometimes we need a friend to help us out. Today is, of course, the third ember day of this week as well, and I've been reflecting on vocation and questions of discernment in sermons this week throughout the Midday Mass. And I spoke a few days ago about how really this question of vocation is sometimes shackled by this sense we have in modernity that it's part of, we have this overarching, massive plan that God has conceived in his mind and sort of spoken into being, and if we miss it at any given time, then suddenly there's no hope for us. Suddenly there's no vocation. But the Bible itself tells us that vocation isn't rooted necessarily in the constellation of our own skills and gifts, but instead sometimes is revealed to us in circumstance. How sometimes the things around us that we have no control over at all, the people, the relationships, the work, the family, suddenly laid before us is a task or an opportunity or a challenge that just a week ago or a year ago we couldn't have even conceived. And our vocation is to trust God then, to say yes then. Whether or not that call is a part of the plan that we conceived of for ourselves, sometimes the truest part of our vocation lies in just this invitation to radical trust in God in hitherto unforeseen circumstances. And that is the legacy of Barnabas. He traveled, he argued, he preached, he fought, he ran away. He did all sorts of things, really, because he just had no choice. The work of a disciple is unpredictable. The work of an evangelist is chaotic sometimes, even frightening. And yet Barnabas consistently throughout Scripture says yes to God. And I think that's our invitation too, wherever we may be, wherever we may imagine our vocation be leading us, to trust in the circumstances of God, to trust in his providence, and to trust that we are exactly what God has meant us to be, and that it's never too late to say yes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning take the form of Form 6 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will pray together responsibly, beginning on page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. For Michael, our presiding bishop. For Daniel, our bishop. And for Sean, Nora, Stephen, Gordon, and Nicholas, my brother and sister priests who worship and pray in this place, for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in this church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially for all those entrusted to us on our parish prayer list, including Chris, Sue, George, John, Homer, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Mark. Ira, Judith, Nick, Russell, Wes, John, Joan, Marilyn, Lorraine, Teresa, Will, Bryce, Audrey, Joanne, Alex, Rodney, Lily, Diana, Daniel, Eric, Joshua, Howard, Jeff, Martha, and Margaret and all of those people who have asked us to keep them in our own prayers, and all people throughout the world with no one to remember them and to pray for them. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially this day giving thanks for the beginning of the summer season, for the opportunity for fellowship and joy in our parish picnic this afternoon, for all people who have dedicated themselves faithfully to the mission of this place, and especially this, this, on this day, this Ember Day, praying for those who are in discernment of their vocation, that they may quiet in their hearts to hear the still, small voice of God. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially this day praying for all those who died of COVID-19 and all those whose lives have been taken from them by acts of violence, fear, warfare, or oppression. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their, their trust, trust in you? We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful, merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May, may the Lord receive the sacrifice of my hands to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations, and promised to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Mark the Evangelist, blessed Barnabas and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but speak, speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.